Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at the city of Lublin, one of the oldest and most historical city of Eastern Poland. We'll be going to the Catholic University of Lublin to talk to a professor, a Polish Canadian, who wrote the first history book in English about Lublin. The Jagiellonian dynasty was known as one of the most famous and more prosperous dynasties of Poland. And they were originally from Lithuania, I believe. That's and, correct. Mm -hmm. Well, Lublin having been lined between Vilnius, which is the Lithuanian yeah. capital at the time, and Krakow, which is the Polish capital at the time, I would believe. Yes. How right. did the location benefit the city as a whole? Well, uh, among other things, it uh, added an additional trade route because of the, the other trade route was more east and west. And uh, this became a major trade route, but what I can also add that it also w had a very uh, significant political impact mm -hmm. in that, uh, well, the union between the Lithuanian dynasty involved a, uh, a personal union mm -hmm. between Lithuania and uh, the Kingdom of Poland. Mm -hmm. And uh, each state was independent, mm -hmm. even, even though they cooperated quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but among other things, trade sort of uh, increased between them. Mm -hmm. uh, King Jagiello even gave uh, Lublin merchants rights to trade in Lithuania before he became king. Well, let's say the future, so I should say the future King Jagiello right. uh, gave Lublin merchants rights to trade in Lithuania before, a few years before he became king. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, this became a politically important route as well, because the, uh, the kings would go between their former, well, between their lands. Of course, the, uh, there was a, ru a Lithuanian ruler that was more or less in con command of the Dushi of Lithuania, as it came to be known. Uh, but the, the Jagiellonian king still had close connections with us, so he would travel that route quite often and would stay in Lublin quite, quite often. Uh, so King Jagiello, the first king of that dynasty, stayed very often in Lublin. Mm -hmm. And actually, when he was coming from Vilnius, to Krakow, mm -hmm. he accepted baptism because to marry the, uh, the Polish queen, he had to. He w he himself was a pagan, mm -hmm. and he had to accept baptism. Right, and uh, and he was acclaimed king mm -hmm. here uh, in Lublin before uh, moving on to except his crown, wow. <laughs> in, or to, to marry the Queen of Poland in, in Krakow. Right. And uh, actually, one of the uh, architectural features in Lublin, the most striking one, is this uh, chapel, the, 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 the castle chapel, mm -hmm. which uh, the old chapel, was a Gothic chapel. Mm -hmm. But uh, since the Agielos had conquered quite a lot of Ruthenian lands from the, from the Golden Horde, mm -hmm. from the Mongols, uh, they had quite a few Orthodox citizens. And uh, Agiello was very familiar with Orthodox art. Right. And so he, uh, impl uh, he wanted uh, the art in the uh, in the chapel to be painted by you know Orthodox painters, mm -hmm. so it is more or less a kind of uh, Catholic doctrine, but the style is Byzantine style. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Orthodox style, mm -hmm. and it's very very striking. It's a kind of uh, well, Pope John Paul talks about the the two lungs. Western Europe and, and Eastern Europe, and, and, and in relation to that, the Latin and the uh, Eastern Christianity. Mm -hmm. And here is in Lublin is where that meets 
in that in that chapel. Right. So uh, yes, so that trade route was was very important, mm -hmm. and uh, Lublin played an important uh, role above and beyond this. Uh, this union between Lithuania and the Kingdom of Poland got more closer and closer in various stages. Now, what's interesting about the chapel, King Agello commissioned the chapel shortly after his victory of, over the Teutonic Knights mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in Grunwald, the Poles say Grunwald, I think uh, in English you talk about the Battle of Tannenberg. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, well, this was also one of the reasons for the, uh, for the union, for the personal union, because both the Kingdom of Poland and the, uh, and the Lithuanians had problems with the Teutonic Knights. The, the, the Poles at that point uh, invite, actually invited the Teutonic Knights. <laughs> but well, we know that when international players come in and see opportunity All knocking, right. <laughs> they, uh, they claimed a lot of land for themselves and they cr created all these problems for the, th for the Poles as well as the Lithuanians, mm -hmm. so the Poles and Lithuanians joined. And this was also one of the reasons for Jagiello to, to uh, accept Latin Christianity, because that would, uh, theoretically, that would take away the excuse of the, of the, of, <laughs> of the Teutonic Knights, but of course, they still had to go through that battle, and, but this, uh, this beautiful chapel is, is uh, what we have. In 1386, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, Jogaila, married Jadwiga of Poland, who had earlier officially been declared King of Poland. With this personal union between two states, the Jagiellonian dynasty hailing from Lithuania became the hereditary rulers of Poland. Next up, we will ask Professor Garbowski how Lublin benefited from the center of gravity of Poland moving eastward with the new Lithuanian dynasty in power. As the Jagiellonian dynasty gained in power, I would imagine the center of gravity would shift to the eastern part of Poland. And I was wondering how that shift of importance have an effect on Lublin as a whole. Well, uh... The answer to that question depends on when. Because mm -hmm. you know, the first period, uh, basically, uh, well, the uh, Jagiellonians had control over mm -hmm. the East. So that as, as what that meant, among other things, is that, uh, that Lublin is further within the, uh, the kingdom of, of, of Poland. Well, well uh, that, that there's a kind of an, a, another boundary mm -hmm. Uh, sort of, so the, there's the Lithuanian land, so you have a friendly territory mm -hmm. to the east. Right. So that, f for Lublin as a trading center, that mm -hmm. was important. Right. right. So the trade was easier for the, to the east. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that was one of the major initial impacts. Of course, the, later on, there would be trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for the time being, uh, the benefits outweighed the, uh, outweighed the problems, so right. to say. Right. As we have seen today, Lublin has a very long, yet at times dramatic, history. But places such as the Catholic University of Lublin sufficiently demonstrated the city spirit and their love for freedom. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.